Well, the engine is back in and <clears throat> I have not started it yet for one problem. I tried priming my oil system to make sure I had oil pressure prior to starting it and we have no go. So for those of you who are not familiar with checking for oil pressure, here's kind of a good tip. So your distributor will drive your oil pump shaft and your oil pump shaft typically looks like this. So your oil pump shaft sits down in there and drives your oil pump itself by the end of this distributor. So what I've got here is basically a test rod. So that goes all the way down in there into where the oil pump shaft is at. And this will prime the oil system by going counterclockwise. So I stuck my camera down there, I'll throw some videos up on the screen, but I found out that the plate on the bottom of my oil pump is spewing oil out the sides of it. So, yeah, I'm trying to debate on what I'm going to do to fix this. But for those of you who aren't familiar with troubleshooting oil pressure, um, that's kind of a quick rundown. So on most Fords, 302s and 351s on the side of the block you can see right there it's tapped off for oil and you usually have your pressure sensor there so what I did was I teed into mine for my supercharger so I disconnected this and I tried to make sure I was getting oil coming out of here when that didn't happen then I stuck my camera in there but you could also take your oil pressure sending it off see if you're getting oil out there the other thing I did and I'll throw some videos up as well as I turn my key on with my oil pressure sensor on and I tried priming the system and I got no oil pressure. So I knew that I had an issue somewhere. And a borescope camera, if you shove it down your distributor hole, your oil pumps are right over on this side and you can get a pretty good look at the top of it um, from going that way. So I got a very, very tiny layer of uh, silicone there. Well, along with no gasket on the oil pump, I also noticed that the uh, pickup tube is not tight to the pump. So that was probably the main issue, but I also saw air coming out from around this. So we should be good to go now, which is a good thing. I'm willing to bet that's going to uh, pick up oil a hell of a lot better. What was weird is, that, and I'll throw a, you probably already seen a clip of it, but I'll throw another one up here, is out of my video, the borescope, you could see that there was air, or it looked like air, coming out around this, this uh, bottom of the oil pump. <clears throat> so what I'm willing to bet is we're picking up air from here, and since it wasn't, sealed around the bottom here we were pushing air out so should be in a lot better shape all the way around now so i i did just a tiny bit of silicone around this because if if it gets inside and interferes with the oil pump itself we would be shoving chunks of stuff into the uh into the oiling system which is not what i want to do so and then pick up two man that's just, I'm glad it was something easy. Not sure where you guys are from, but it started snowing here today. First snow of the season. And it is cold. Time to get that heater running. All right, so we've got the engine button up. Everything's back together, and before I put the engine back in the car, I'm going to test for, um, I'm going to prime the system basically and test for oil pressure before I get everything back in. I don't want to go through this again. So we're going to fill it up with oil. Um, I'm going to throw six quarts in it, give it a prime, and see what we got. So we got oil in it, and I'm running a conventional oil in it, just a 
standard 10W30. Uh, the engine's already broke, broke in and broken. <laughs> uh, we fixed the broken part. But um, the engine's already broke in. We just want to make sure that we run the conventional in there for a little bit until the ring seat. That's the only thing. That we, we did do new bearings and we did do uh, new rings. So we want to make sure that, that uh, we get everything broken in the right way again instead of breaking it. So we're going to run a conventional for about 500 miles and uh, then swap it out for a synthetic or something that lubricates a little better, has a better uh, film strength. So I'm going to raise this up a little bit and then we will give it a shot at priming it and see how it goes. Alright, so we've got, uh, got six quarts of oil in it. What I'm going to do is use this guy here. So we're going to prime it and we're going to make sure that uh, oil comes out of this supercharger oil line. Um, it should. So this is T right off of the oil supply for the pressure sending unit. So it should be coming right out there and we'll make sure that it's good. Oh yeah, there we go. There's the oil pressure we were looking for. I'll bring in a little closer here. See if you can see what I'm seeing. It's probably going to be really tough for you to see. But you can see, so this, this fitting right here is going to start dribbling oil out of it. There we go. Oh, made a mess. <laughs> it's all right. At least uh, now we got oil pressure. That's uh, a bonus. All right, so the, uh, the last thing I'm going to do is as I'm cranking or as I'm um, as I'm priming the system what I'm going to do is slowly crank the engine a little bit so that all of the bearing surfaces get some oil on it. Alright so I'm going to be priming it and then I've got a ratchet here on the crankshaft and I'm just going to slowly turn it around and then prime it a little bit. Well, now it's time for my favorite part. We got to do the reassembly. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna get to it. We got a lot to do. I got to put the engine back in. I wanted to clean up the engine bay, but you know what? It's a race car anyway. I'm not that worried about all the, the show and where that has to go. So I'm gonna get the engine back in so I can get it back on the track. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your support. We'll see you on the next video. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button.